John Bennett, broadcasting for Neurosurgical TV. We have U.S. Uh, China Neurosurgery Grand Rounds uh, with the two Goel, the king of Zoom, I'll, and king of Zoom. And I'll let the uh, give a professional introduction. Welcome, Yuha. Dear Atul, dear all, welcome again to a great webinar. Can you see my? Yeah. Yes, we can. Line? Yes, we can. Okay, now. Okay, fine. So uh, we have again here Professor Adul Goel from Mumbai, chairman of King Edward's Hospital. He's one of the most important neurosurgeons of these times in the world. How to become a good neurosurgeon? For that, you need to be a social person. You cannot become a neurosurgeon alone, but you need heroes, mentors, and friends. These are all extremely important. And I'm very happy to have as a, one of the heroes of mine is Adul Goel, and he's also a good friend of mine. So how to become a good neurosurgeon? Very simple, train hard. Follow the way Professor Adul Goel is doing. I have learned very much from him during the webinars, but of course we know each other 20 years and I have followed him extremely carefully and tried to follow his footsteps. So neurosurgery has three parts, operative skills, then research, clinical and basic research, as neurosurgeons, we should do clinical uh, research. This is better for our profession. And then teaching, like John Manson, Adol is the king of webinars. He's lecturing extremely passionate and convincing. And this is one of the things we should learn from him. How to improve all the time? You should analyze your experience and publish. This makes you five times better in your research. You should not believe everything that has been done in the world. You should find new strategies and new ways to treat the patients. Thinking and observing your surgeries, patients, outcomes is very important. And you should learn from others. This is very important to have open mind. You should not continue with that, what you learned in the six or seven years of your training and then continue this 30, 40 years the same. You should all the time change. This is how it goes and this way you become better. So World Neurosurgery selected 2014, 69, most important neurosurgeons during the 100 years in the world. And here we see Adul Goel from India is here. And he has published profusely important papers. More than 800, this means that he has analyzed what he's doing and thinking of that. And as mentioned, this is one of the ways to become a great neurosurgeon. Professor Adul Goel is doing around 1,500 personal operations a year. This is possible in a big country like India, China. For that, you have to be excellent neurosurgeon, organizer, surrounded by a good supporting team and the patients and society. All that is needed for that kind of flow of surgeries. You should train your best young people. They should become better than you. And this is very important in, in developing development of neurosurgery all the time. So thank you very much. 
Shay Shay. I give the word to Atul Goel. He is speaking on surgery of uh, trigeminal neurinomas. So, Atul, please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Yuha, for inviting me to this very important neurosurgical seminar. This is one of the most important seminars of neurosurgery and several wonderful people have, uh, have had the privilege to be here and I'm extremely proud to be on this pan. You are, of course, is one of the finest and one of the most loved neurosurgeons of the world, and it is my great honor. And I see my friend Bin Zhu Takashi. I see Victor in the audience. And of course, the man from Miami Beach in his attire, my dear John. And he has given me several very important positions. And one of them, I hope I'm able to convince him more after this webinar. So I'm going to talk today on one of my very favorite subjects, and that is trigeminal neurinomas. Trigeminal neurinomas were not really understood 25 years ago. Very few people in the world knew how to operate. Maybe 30 years ago, trigeminal neurinomas were an enigma. Trigeminal neurinomas, nobody actually knew the concepts of trigeminal neurinoma surgery. With the evolution of skull-based surgery and with the understanding of various intricacies of skull base and introduction of MRI and all these things have happened to put the surgery of trigeminal neurinoma on the forefront. So trigeminal neurinomas are quite common. In neurinomas, they are second only to acoustic neurinomas. And rarely these tumors are associated with neurofibromatosis. So in the year 2003, I wrote this article on trigeminal neurinomas, my experience with 73 cases. At that time, this was the largest series in the world at that time. And I had some very interesting observations in this article of mine. One of the major observation was that trigeminal neurinomas arise in the Meckel's cave in the region of Gasserian ganglia. So this was the first time it was mentioned in this article that trigeminal neurinomas arise from the Gasserian ganglion or in the Meckel's cave. Like we know, internal acoustic artery canal is the origin of acoustic neurinomas. Similarly, when the nerve comes out inside the Meckel's cave, the origin of trigeminal neurinoma is in this area. So this is, was one very important observation in this article. Second very important observation was that after surgery on trigeminal neurinomas, you can improve the sensations of trigeminal nerve, like numbness of the face can improve. So as a series, this was never mentioned before that when you operate on trigeminal neurinoma, sensations of the face can improve. This fact was never mentioned before. So this was an observation in this article. And the other very beautiful observation in this article was 
that trigeminal neuronomas in the middle cranial fossa, in the middle cranial fossa are between the layers of the dura or they are interdural in location. And the trigeminal nerve is displaced by the tumor. Carotid artery is displaced by the tumor. Cavernous sinus is displaced by the tumor. So this part of the tumor in the vicinity of the cavernous sinus has its own compartment. And that compartment, we use that compartment for the first time in the literature, interdural surgical approach. So we use the dura and make, made an approach between the layers of the dura. So we said that the carotid artery is displaced, cavernous sinus is displaced, and you can work within the dura without getting venous bleeding, without having carotid control, and without the need for any exposure of the third nerve, fourth nerve, sixth nerve. They are all outside the confines of the dura of the trigeminal neurinoma. So this is what were the observation in this very beautiful article. The other thing which I observed in this article was that the posterior cranial fossa tumor is like an acoustic tumor and it is subarachnoid in location. But then we subsequently, we changed that observation and we said that in several cases, even the posterior cranial fossa part of the tumor is within the dura. So that we subsequently changed in majority of cases. I'm not saying the posterior fossa will be in the dura in 100% of cases, but in majority of cases, I will discuss about this interdural location of the posterior cranial fossa component of the trigeminal neurinoma. So we must know that these tumors arise in the gastrian ganglion and gastrian ganglion has its own dura. And when the tumor becomes big, the dura is covering the tumor. So this was the article and you can see that this was mentioned in our article that we observed that the most of the tumors probably arose at the site of entry of the fifth nerve into the Meckel's dural cave. So this was the observation in this article. The other observation in this article was that the facial sensations improved. Facial sensations improved. So this fact was never mentioned before. And you must also know that this article was written in the year 2003. And my experience was for at least 10 years before that. At that time in the world, trigeminal neurinoma surgery was not very heavily or highly developed. So this was my article on extracranial. So in the year 2010, I wrote this article on extracranial, trigeminal neurinoma with extracranial extension my experience with 28 cases. This was also the largest experience in the world. And on the basis of my experience, we said that even the extracranial part of the tumor, extracranial part of the tumor is interdural in location. I will of course discuss this fact in my subsequent slides. So in this article, in 2002, we published 73 cases. Then I presented my material from 1988 to 2017, 260 cases. And now in the furthest four years, I have completed 300 or more cases of trigeminal neurinoma, which I believe is the highest number of cases in the world. And many of my techniques and philosophies about various tumors 
has been discussed in my book, which I have shown earlier. So trigeminal nerve is located at the petrous apex and it is quite a flat ganglion. You see quite a flat ganglion. The nerve comes from the middle cerebellar peduncle, goes in the petrous apex in the Meckel's dural cave and then there is a gasserian ganglion and this is the V1 division of the trigeminal nerve. This is the V2 division of the trigeminal nerve. And this is the V3 division of the trigeminal nerve. So V1 and V2 form the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. So this nerve is completely enclosed within the dura. So this is a very, very important picture which was published in Gray's anatomy book. So this is the pituitary gland. This is the carotid artery. This is the sixth cranial nerve. Third, fourth, V1 and V2 and V3 bifurcates before the cavernous sinus. So these two nerves you are seeing are completely within the dura and the third nerve and fourth nerve also have a dura and the sixth nerve also has a dura along the internal carotid artery. So this, as the nerve comes here, this is the gasserian ganglion. It divides into V1, V2 and V3. The carotid artery goes inside the cavernous sinus and this blue is the, there is CSF of the posterior fossa, which is surrounding the dura of, which is inside the Meckel's cave and around the gasserian ganglion. So dura is very, very important structure. It keeps your brain completely out of the world. It makes the brain a separate and a discrete compartment. Nothing from the nose can come in the brain. Nothing from the ear can come into the brain. Nothing can from the mouth can come into the brain. It has a completely isolated compartment formed by this dura. And I have discussed before that on the basis of how the arteries are displaced, we can identify which tumor is trigeminal neurinoma and which tumor is not a trigeminal neurinoma. As I mentioned, that trigeminal neurinoma never encases the carotid artery. Never, if the carotid artery is in the middle of the tumor, it is not, not trigeminal neurinoma. Trigeminal neurinoma displaces the internal carotid artery medially and inferiorly in the petrous apex. So this, these articles are written several years ago and these are very important articles of mine. So now you see this tumor is encasing the artery. This is a meningioma. This tumor is encasing the artery. This is a pituitary tumor. This tumor is displacing the artery and this is discrete kind of tumor. So impact of arterial displacement, you can identify which tumor is what. So now I take you to the world of trigeminal neurinomas. It's a beautiful world. It is a very benign world. It is not a malignant world. It is a beautiful world. You remove the tumor and you give the person a new life. What you have to remember is that this middle fossa component of the tumor is within the dura. And on several occasions, the posterior fossa component of the tumor is also within the dura. So interdural location of this tumor. So this is the very well-known classification by Sami, by Kawase and various other people who have worked on trigeminal neurinoma. So type A is the one which is located in the middle fossa. 
So middle fossa tumor, you see located in the middle cranial fossa, carotid artery is displaced medially by the tumor, never inside the tumor. Tumor located in the posterior cranial fossa, these kind of complete location in the posterior cranial fossa are relatively rare. So this is type B. Type A is middle fossa, type B is posterior cranial fossa. Type C is this kind of dumbbell shape, middle fossa and posterior fossa. And these are very common types of, uh, 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 common types of trigeminal neuroma. So this is in the petrous apex, this part is in the dura, and this part is in the dura in majority of cases. So these beautiful dumbbells you can see, and when you see these dumbbells, when you see the carotid artery displaced medially, when you see that there is a well-defined cover of the tumor, and when you see posterior fossa going on, on the middle cerebellar peduncle, this is a trigeminal neurinoma. So trigeminal neurinomas can be of various shapes and sizes, but the most important thing is the location of the tumor at the petrous apex. So see this beautiful tumor located in the middle fossa, in the posterior fossa, no basilar artery will come in the center of the tumor ever. It will be displaced by the tumor and there is a well-defined margin of the tumor and these tumors are at the petrous apex. You can see the distance of the tumor from the temporal convexity. It is not very big. So this is the external ear canal and external can ear canal is directly in line with the petrous apex. So this tumor, the middle or the center of the tumor is at the external ear canal. Quite frequently, these tumors are in the extracranial compartment along the divisions of the trigeminal nerve. So this is the V1 division of the trigeminal nerve. This tumor we reported that this is the region of middle fossa and going along the V1 division or the lacrimal division of the trigeminal nerve, V1 division. And this is, as I mentioned to you, that even this part of the tumor is within the dura. Carotid artery is displaced along the medial side of the tumor. You see, this is the, these are the teeth here. And this is along the foramen rotundum along the V2 division of the trigeminal nerve. So these tumors can go along the V2 division of the trigeminal nerve, but you must remember the major bulk of the tumor always remains in the middle cranial fossa because the tumor arises in the region of gastrian ganglion. Um, from there, it goes into the region of foramen rotundum in the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. So this is along the V2. This is along the V3, the mandibular division. The tumor is coming down and it is going along the mandibular division. You see the foramen ovale is eroded by the tumor. So the bones become eroded. So this foramen ovale has become big because these are benign tumors, these are slow growing tumors. They erode the bone and they enlarge the foramen. So this is enlarged foramen ovale. Sometimes these tumors can have completely extracranial location and then you have to identify the nature of this tumor by the symptoms. And this is post-operative scan. You see this is along the V, 
V2 division along the teeth. You see he has lost some teeth here. There is some swelling here. And this is along the V2 division of the trigeminal nerve. This is a huge trigeminal neuronoma. On the basis of radiology, on the basis of symptoms, you can identify the tumor in 100% of cases. This is another tumor. You see this tumor has gone into the infratemporal fossa along the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. And this boy has lost his cornea and it has become white. And you can see this patient is having neurofibromatosis and caffeolo spots. And this tumor is quite a mega and massive tumor. You see there is a mandibular swelling here and this tumor is a multi-compartmental tumor in the posterior cranial fossa, in the middle cranial fossa, in the infratemporal fossa and in the subcutaneous area. This is the subcutaneous tumor. So this is in the four compartments, this tumor is there. So type A is the middle fossa component, which is only type A is not very common, but it is not very rare, only type A. Type B is relatively rare. Type C is double shaped when middle fossa and posterior fossa. And type D is when the tumor has, is having extracranial extension. So this is type D. So trigeminal neurinomas are diagnosed on the basis of symptoms and on the basis of radiology. When the patient comes with numbness over the face as a dominant symptom, it is trigeminal neurinoma. When the patient comes with wasting of the temporalis muscle and masseter muscle, it is, tem it is trigeminal neurinoma. The tumor can be very small in size. So this is a very small trigeminal neurinoma. Or it can be huge in size. You see, it is a very big trigeminal neurinoma. It can be quite necrotic. You see, it is a huge trigeminal neurinoma and quite necrotic. You see, there are multiple necrotic areas within the tumor. So this can assume a very huge size, but still, Histologically, they are quite benign in nature. Of course, when there is a cystic presence in the tumor, they are inherently a little bit more aggressive. So they can be huge dumbbells. You see, there can be huge dumbbells in the posterior cranial fossa, in the middle cranial fossa, and also in the infratemporal fossa. So these, this is the beautiful, I call trigeminal neurinoma, one of the more beautiful tumors to be seen and to be operated. You can imagine the soft nature of the tumor going right up to the temporal convexity, being covered by the dura is quite a wonderful surgical operation. So this is another huge tumor and you can see the necrotic areas within the tumor. So majority of my cases are, you know, quite huge and very big. And you can see that in the percentage, there are four to six centimeter beyond six centimeter are quite a number of my cases. The other very important thing is there can be cyst within the tumor. You see, there is a cyst. And as I mentioned to you, the cyst when it is there, you just cannot do, just puncture of the cyst and come out, the recurrence will be 100%. You have to remove the entire tumor. So I will discuss how to remove this tumor in my subsequent lecture. So this is another kind of cyst. You see there are two color cysts. This is hyper intense and this is hypo intense. This kind of multicolored cyst is seen only in craniopharyngiomas and no other tumor I have seen 
multicolored cyst like this. Another very critical thing that you are seeing in this slide is the presence of fluid level in the tumor. You see this fluid level? And when there is a fluid level within the tumor, these tumors become relatively more aggressive and the recurrence rates in these kind of tumors is much higher. Now, very carefully see this slide, there are multiple fluid levels. You see multiple fluid levels in the tumor. Right, I'm not sure if you can see here, there are fluid levels here, there is a fluid level here, there is a fluid level here, and this is a trigeminal neuroma. So fluid levels indicate the presence of a benign tumor, which is more aggressive, more aggressive benign. Now you see this beautiful large tumor has multiple fluid levels. You see fluid level here, fluid level here, fluid level here, fluid level, fluid level, fluid level, fluid level. So this is a huge tumor and you can diagnose this tumor on the basis of the fluid levels. And of course, on the basis of presenting clinical symptoms. So this is a trigeminal neuronoma because fluid levels. Bilateral trigeminal neuronomas are present in neurofibromatosis. So when there are bilateral tumors, you don't have to operate both the tumors unless one of the tumors become large and the patient presents with the symptom of ataxia. So ataxia is one major indication for surgery in these kind of cases. So bilateral are present in NF2 or neurofibromatosis. Now you see this beautiful tumor. This is a huge acoustic tumor. And this is a large trigeminal neurinoma. So they are almost kissing each other. You see tumors of completely different type. This is acoustic and this is trigeminal and both are almost touching not almost they are completely touching you can imagine the situation of the brain stem and how it must have been displaced this is another case of nf2 you see there is a trigeminal neuronoma there is a fourth nerve tumor there is a sixth nerve tumor there is a seventh nerve tumor you see going along the geniculate ganglion fourth nerve tumor, fifth nerve tumor. So this kind of tumor can rarely be associated with NF2. So NF2 are usually associated with bilateral trigeminal neuronomas. Now I want to show you another very fantastic case. This is bilateral trigeminal neuronoma. And you see a CT scan. CT scan is showing ossification. There is bone inside the tumor. So presence of ossification in trigeminal neuronomas is quite a rare situation. And we have encountered at least six or seven cases in my series where there was ossification in trigeminal neuronoma. So this is, and you can imagine this trigeminal neuronoma and this trigeminal neuronoma also attempting to kiss each other. And this kissing can be, of course, quite dangerous for the brainstem. This is a trigeminal neuronoma, and this is a retroorbital tumor. So trigeminal neuronomas can be associated with some other tumors, like this tumor was a hemangiopericytoma. And uh, this was quite a vascular tumor, and some uh, this patient was being treated in plastic surgery, and they wanted to remove the eyeball and the tumor. Fortunately, I had a hold on this tumor and I could get this patient into neurosurgery. And this tumor we operated first and this tumor we operated next. So this was quite a vascular tumor. And this, you see, we removed this tumor first and then I removed this tumor. So both these tumors were removed. This was hemangiopericytoma and this is a trigeminal neuronoma. And this patient, 
I am having a follow-up of more than 25 years. This boy is still alive, in, alive and thriving. And he is quite, uh, you know, this is an old picture. I have not taken his recent picture. Of course, he's 25 years older than this picture, but he is completely normal and he's never allowed me to do any new scan on him because he's asymptomatic. These tumors are present in majority in middle age, rarely in older age and quite rarely in very young children. In young children, they are present mainly in cases of NF2, NF2. So I had reported this 18 month old child who had presented with this tumor and with the symptom of proptosis. And we had reported this beautiful tumor several years ago. So what is more important in trigeminal neurinomas is they have characteristic clinical features, symptoms of trigeminal nerve involvement like numbness of the face and wasting of the temporalis and masseter muscle are very dominant symptoms in trigeminal neurinoma. If you have these symptoms as dominant symptoms, they are usually trigeminal neurinoma. So they have characteristic clinical features and characteristic radiological features. So clinical features and radiological features, you can make diagnosis that yes, this is trigeminal neurinoma. I must tell you that this was not possible. This was not possible 25, 30 years ago. Trigeminal neurinoma surgery was not very commonly done. So trigeminal distribution of nerve numbness can be in the region of V1, V2, V3, and motor sensations can be involved in quite a number of cases. Several years ago, I had reported four cases of these kind of dumbbell tumors, huge tumors who had come with pathological laughter as a presenting symptom. Pathological laughter four cases. Now I am having at least 13 or 14 cases who have come with symptom of pathological laughter as a presenting, one of the major presenting symptoms. Pathological laughter. So there are various kinds of symptoms these patients can present. Facial numbness, facial pain when it is present, it is not very common. And when it is present, it is usually a little bit more aggressive tumor, headache, gait disturbance, pathological laughter, hearing disturbance. So because the tumors in my series have been quite huge, so that is why the symptoms are also huge. So characteristic anatomical relationship, Petrus apex is eroded, cavernous carotid is displaced, so very important. So confined to the dural space or interdural location in the posterior fossa, intradural and interdural. So this is the anatomical situation. Now you see this tumor, this is a large tumor and the anterior clinoid process is completely eroded by this tumor. The petrous apex is quite heavily eroded by this tumor. You see this tumor is in the petrous apex. It is quite badly eroded by the, by the trigeminal neurinoma. Not destroyed. Bone is not destroyed by this tumor. Bone is eroded by the slow, bone makes way for the tumor. Bone makes way to accommodate this tumor. So these tumors are within the dura, carotid is away, and here this posterior fossa is also within the dura in a number of cases. So if you have to do trigeminal neurinoma surgery, you must remember that this is the very thick dural membrane of the middle fossa. There is one membrane of the middle fossa and one membrane of the trigeminal nerve. So there are two layers of dura and this is the trigeminal nerve making its royal entry into the lateral wall of cavernous sinus. And you can see the gasserian ganglion 
and the various divisions of the trigeminal nerve. This is the carotid artery. And you see, this is the beautiful gasserine ganglion. This dissection has been done by one of my very important colleagues in my department. So V1 division, V2 division, V3 division of the trigeminal nerve. Now I come to surgery and I will let you know my own historical, how I have gone into surgery of trigeminal neurinomas. In the year 1992, I operated on this patient. 1992 means about 28 years ago or 29 years ago. At that time, I have to tell you that skull-based surgery was emerging. Very few people like Hakuba, like Leonard Malice, like Laligam Shaker. Laligam Shaker was young at that time. Malice introduced for the first time single stage approach, one stage approach for removing of these tumors. As I mentioned to you during that time, 30 years ago or 35 years ago, trigeminal neurinoma surgery was, when you operated on trigeminal neurinoma, means facial sensation has to go. Second thing is with the CT scan, it was difficult to op diagnose trigeminal neurinomas. So uh, when MRI came into picture, this diagnosis became much more better. So this was the tumor I operated in 1992 in two stages. So in the first stage, I removed the middle fossa tumor and then I came retro sigmoid, I removed this posterior fossa tumor. So this was the tumor before operation and this was the tumor I removed in the year 1992, 29 years ago. This was also removed in 1992 in two stages. You see, this is the large tumor. There are necrotic changes. The concept at that time was the larger tumor should be operated first and then the smaller tumor. So I operated and I removed the larger tumor first and then I removed the middle fossa. So this was operated in two stages in 20, 20 years ago. At that time, single stage surgery was not the norm. But then of course our anatomical understanding improved and then we went on further. So the concept that we introduced in trigeminal neurinoma surgery is surgery for the middle fossa is play with the dura. And surgery for the posterior fossa component is play with the dura and the arachnoid. So this is trigeminal nerve, this is dura, this is also dura, trigeminal nerve is intact. And you must remember, trigeminal nerve is intact. So this was the first time we introduced for the tumors, for intracavernous sinus tumors, extradural approach. At that time, Winko Dolenz had described intradural approach, extradural approach for aneurysms and also for trigeminal neurinoma extradural approach. And we describe interdural approach. In this book, we have discussed several of these approaches. So my several articles have mentioned about the dura being the mother of brain. And this is from the Arabic world. I got this sentence. Alum al dimag means the meninges are the mother of the brain. And also the tumors respect the dura. So for the posterior fossa, if the tumor is going in the posterior cranial fossa, of course the retrosigmoid approach is a good operation and you can remove them. But purely posterior fossa tumors are not very common. When it is posterior fossa, you can do a retrosigmoid operation. When it is quite hugely in the posterior fossa and little bit in the middle fossa, I now recently I am doing retrosigmoid operation for such tumors. And you can see that I have removed this tumor and I have gone into the trigeminal Meckel's cave and I have removed this tumor. Earlier, some years ago, I used to come, of course, I still come, I will show you many of these cases. Middle fossa approach is a most beautiful, astounding approach for these tumors. 
This is another tumor which has little bit smaller middle fossa component. And you see, I have removed, this is the trigeminal nerve and this tumor I have exposed in the middle fossa. This is the tumor and I have removed this tumor from the posterior fossa approach. So one approach is posterior fossa approach. This is of course a tumor which is not a trigeminal, it is a meningioma going into the gastrin ganglion into the Meckel's cave and I removed it from the posterior cranial fossa approach. This is another tumor which I recently removed in the COVID times. During the COVID times, I have removed this tumor and this tumor also in the post Meckel's cave from the posterior cranial fossa approach. Now I want to tell you the story of 1995 and carefully listen to what I'm saying. In the year 1995, you see my approach, infratemporal fossa, intradural approach. So this is the tumor and you see these are the surgeon's hands, widening of the Meckel's cave and working within the dura, I remove this tumor without doing any craniotomy, no craniotomy. So this was, you see at that time, cavernous sinus tumors were very difficult to operate. Even now they are difficult, but of course now we operate more uh, comfortably. But in 1995, 25, 26 years ago, these tumors were very dangerous tumors. But you see on the basis, the, you see the concept that these tumors are trigeminal, that is one. Second thing is they will be in the dura. So I described this approach, infratemporal, interdural approach without doing craniotomy in 1995. So this was one tumor which was on the basis of clinical findings, trigeminal neurinoma. And I did a small, very little craniotomy around the foramen ovale and opened the dura, not open the dura, within the dura, I removed this tumor in 1995. Also, I removed in 1995 by doing just this bit craniotomy. <clears throat> you can imagine how much I must have. And this is picture from my article that was published in 1995. I removed even the posterior cranial fossa tumor and the middle fossa tumor. You see, this is the post-operative image by doing just opening of the foramen ovale without doing any temporal craniotomy. This was another tumor which I had removed. This was clearly a trigeminal neurinoma on symptoms. And I did, rem I removed this tumor by just opening the foramen ovale without doing any craniotomy. Of course, I don't do this infratemporal fossa approach often. In the year 1996, 25 years ago, we described this kind of exposure for trigeminal neurinoma. Large dumbbell shaped. I described this one for large dumbbell shaped tumors. You see this, this is the removal of the root of the zygoma, roof of the condyle, roof of the external ear canal, partial mastoidectomy, opening of the mastoid antrum. The center of the exposure is the external ear canal. So this is my exposure. I must say, I don't do it now. I will tell you what I do now. And this is extradural exposure and then working within the dura, I remove the tumor. So I place the patient in lateral position, lumbar puncture, and this is my basal lateral subtemporal approach. And this paper was the first time in the literature where mastoidectomy was included in lateral subtemporal exposure. So this was a basal lateral subtemporal exposure. Basal lateral extension of the subtemporal middle fossa approach, which was published in the year 1996. So this is the external ear canal. My incision was like this. Not usually we take an incision like this, but here it was in this, and my craniotomy was in this fashion. 
Normally, when we retract the temporalis muscle, this muscle bulk is very thick. But in trigeminal neuronomas, this becomes wasted and becomes thin. And this kind of retraction, you don't have to, you see, normally we do zygomatic osteotomy to get this exposure. But in trigeminal neuronomas, this muscle becomes thick and there is no need to do zygomatic osteotomy now. Another beautiful thing that you will see is I have rotated the temporalis muscle anteriorly. You see, normally we rotate the muscle down and that is why we have to remove the zygoma. But this anterior rotation of the temporalis muscle can give you a beautiful exposure for the middle fossa approach. So this is my craniotomy in two pieces, cut here, cut zygoma posterior root, root of uh, roof of condyle, roof of external ear canal, make a cut here and make a cut in the petrous bone and open the mastoid bone and open the mastoid antrum. And this is my exposure. This is the petrous apex. As I mentioned to you, that this part of the bone is eroded by the tumor. Now for the tumors which are dumbbell shaped, which go in the posterior cranial fossa, you, it is, you know, sometimes the erosion is quite big and you can follow the, from this hole. But in larger tumors which go in the posterior cranial fossa, it is better to come intradural and then cut the tentorium and and then remove the posterior cranial fossa part. Because from here to remove the exposure in the window may be quite small. And there is no need to do any drilling of the petrous apex, no need for drilling. So this is my exposure. And you can see here, this is the roof of the condyle. This is the condyle. This is the external ear canal. This is some mastoidectomy. And this is external ear canal. This is the center of my exposure. And I had written this article several years ago of my experience with 18 cases, maybe in 1995 or 96, 26 years ago. You see the temporalis muscle is rotated anteriorly. And this is the basal exposure first, and then you drill the removal of the root of zygoma. As I mentioned to you, this was my history. I don't do such massive exposures now. Splitting of the temporalis muscle. You see, you can split the temporalis muscle and then get the basal exposure. Nowadays, my craniotomy is just this much little bit here. And this small incision, small craniotomy, not so posterior here in the middle of the zygoma I do and my craniotomy is here. So I split the temporalis muscle here. This is my craniotomy now, splitting of the temporalis muscle and do a smallish craniotomy here. And you can do all kinds of trigeminal tumors resection from this craniotomy. You can for, as I mentioned, for dumbbell shaped tumors, you can take a tentorial dural flap. You can cut the dura like, isolate the fourth nerve, retract the temporal brain and cut the dura in this fashion and then elevate the flap like this. I described this flap. You see, now you will say it is very common and all those things. And I described this flap in 1995. Uh, Charles Drake used to take, used to cut the dura for several patients. Our host, uh, you are, must be remembering how he used to do uh, basal artery aneurysms by cutting the tentorium. But this was a dural flap that we described in 1995. So you cut the dura and you can expose the middle fossa, posterior fossa from the middle fossa. So splitting of the temporalis muscle in 1997 made way for a smallish exposure like this for me. And as I mentioned, this is my exposure for majority of trigeminal neuronomas. 
So let me show you now some cases. So this is a trigeminal neurinoma. Work within the dura. Retract the brain, extradurally you come. If it is smallish tumor like this, you will have to come extradural from here, open the dura, learn the art of breaking the tumor. You cannot coagulate this tumor, coagulate this tumor. If you coagulate this tumor very heavily, you will damage the fibers of the fifth nerve. So no coagulation, just break the tumor, break the tumor. Majority of these tumors are very soft tumors. Carotid artery has a de discrete dural, dural definition and you don't have to manipulate or maneuver the carotid artery. So these are small little tumors from very long time of mine and this has been removed quite more important you see, removal of tumor is important, no question. Most important thing in this operation is saving the sensations of the V1, at least V1. Because if you damage the V1, the con this eye is finished. The cornea will become opaque and you will lose the eye. So most important step in this operation is learn the art of breaking the tumor learn the art of demolishing this tumor. You see many of these tumors are soft and necrotic and you can come subtemporal intradural approach and you can remove this tumor. I will say these are one of my most easiest, I should not say easiest, my most favorite tumors in the subject of skull-based surgery. So this is another tumor in the middle fossa going behind. You see, if it is more anteriorly, you can come from more anterior direction. But if it is more posteriorly, you have to come lateral, lateral in this direction. You see lateral, and you can remove this tumor from a lateral perspective. So this is another large tumor, and you have to identify these tumors on the basis of radiology and on the basis of clinical presenting symptoms. This is another tumor, and I must say, if I have seen this tumor, and if I remove this tumor in more than one hour, it will be a very sad day for me. It's not sad, but it is unusual. It will not happen. Because you break the tumor, preserve the dura, there is no carotid, no venous bleeding, what you have to do is you have to save the fibers of the, four, of the fifth nerve. Even the third and fourth nerves are outside the tumor. Sixth nerve is outside the tumor. What you have to do is demolish the tumor whilst preserving this dura. That is the key of operation when you can have a beautiful post-operative imaging. You see the significant erosion of the petrous apex. There is no need to drill any bone. The tumor has drilled the bone for you. Come from here, open the dura, work within the dura and break the tumor, break the tumor and you can beautifully remove this tumor. This is another tumor pre-operative and post-operative. This tumor is a little bit more anteriorly so my exposure is a little bit more anterior. Lateral position, lumbar puncture, retract the dura, open the dura, work within the dura, work within the dura, and you can remove this tumor. You see another beautiful tumor, how the petrous apex is eroded, how the anterior clinoid process is eroded by the tumor, and this is post-operative scan. Work within the dura, break the tumor, break the tumor without heavy coagulation, save the fibers of the fifth nerve. So I'm going to show you one case here, and that is, you know, I don't know what case my young assistant has given, but this is a tumor. You see how I'm retracting the dura and you can see a little bit my exposure is quite big in this case. I will not have such a big exposure now. This is, and also I don't see the image is not so clear. So I'm seeing the tumor now. 
So break the tumor. There is no need to coagulate in this. If you coagulate, you are just wasting your time. And then once you have isolated this tumor, you can remove this tumor in very quick time. This tumor is also, this tape is not very much edited, I must tell you. And this tumor can be removed and you have to identify very nicely the trigeminal nerve. You see the fibers of the trigeminal nerve will definitely, definitely come into picture at the end of your operation. And if they have not come into your picture, you have not done a good operation. You see this is in two minutes, this whole tumor has been removed. Can you, this was not, this was not an edited tape. And if you now carefully examine this area, unfortunately, there is no further in this, the tape. Let us see if, uh, So the hemostasis is quite easy. And so this is a post-op, this is a, this is another tumor. You see this tumor, soft necrotic tumor. This is post-operative image. This scan I have actually shown you. This is the large dumbbell shaped tumor and there is complete resection of this tumor. This is another huge dumbbell shaped tumor. And this is post-operative image showing resection. And when I show you these large tumors, I must tell you that these large tumors are very beautifully seen on MRI, but they were not as beautifully seen on CT scan. And before the era of CT scan, CT scan came into India in 1981. Before 1981, these tumors were hardly even diagnosed. No angiogram or no ventriculogram could have diagnosed these tumors. So the, the story of trigeminal neuronoma has, is only 30, 40 years old. It is not a very big story. So this is another trigeminal neuronoma. Now you can imagine my surgical strategy. Come from lateral, retract the dura, work within the dura, and you have a beautiful post-operative in 20 minutes operation. Now, let me show what image I have got here. I don't, I must say, I don't know what, uh, I've not seen this uh, tape, but whatever is there, I'm showing you. First is retract the dura. This is out, outer layer of dura. So this is a smallish tumor. So I have, I have retracted the dura and I am breaking the tumor. See, you see the nerve, nerves behind the tumor and you have to obviously save those nerves. See, these videos do not exactly show you what my surgical style is, but I can only tell you that you have to, <laughs> learn how to break the tumor. That is one. This bleeding that you are seeing, if you want to have a bloodless field, then of course, this is, you will keep on coagulating and then you will be very severely damage the trigeminal nerve fibers because many a times you don't identify them early and if you coagulate, you can kill the nerves. You have to remove this tumor and nothing but the tumor. And most importantly, you have to do this operation quickly. You have to do this operation within minutes. You see, this is also an unedited version. Little bit may have been edited, I'm not sure. But you can imagine that within a few minutes, this tumor is, it is possible to remove. And little bit editing is there as you have seen now. This blood, you see skull-based surgery has to be done. If you have to do skull-based surgery, you have to do cavernous sinus surgery, you have to learn the art of working in a bloody surgical field. If you, if you want to do a very, very bloodless feel, then of course you can keep on coagulating for 
one day or two days and then come out after five days without removing the tumor. That is not my style of surgery. You, these tumors have to be removed quickly. These tumors have to be removed within the philosophical domain. You have to learn the art of making the tumor. And you have to learn the art of preserving the normal nerve fibers. And that is way, the way you have to go ahead and remove these tumors. You see this tumor, I'm showing you a completely unedited version. And you can see that in a matter of few minutes, this tumor is completely removed. I'm not, you see, in neurosurgery, you never should talk about time factor. Time is, of course, important, but that is not the most important thing. What I am trying to say is that if you prolong this operation by unnecessary coagulation, it can only be harmful for the patient. So you have to break the tumor, work within the dural boundaries, and you deliver the tumor. And once you deliver the tumor, you will see the normal nerve fibers in, in its glory. You don't have to even try to identify where is what. I had done one live surgery workshop in my hospital where I did five acoustic tumors in one afternoon. So that is my style. I am not saying that style is the best and you must do that style. That is my style and I like my style. My style is operate quickly. My style is don't unnecessarily coagulate. My style is work philosophically. My style is save all the cranial nerves in the vicinity and that you can do if you don't prolong the operation unnecessarily. If you prolong the operation unnecessarily, you have very big chance of damaging the cranial nerves, damaging the patient, and you will have a patient who comes out with numbness over the face, and then you say the tumor is bad. Tumor is never bad. We have to make it good. Tumor is these are the most beautiful chapters of our subject of neurosurgery. And we have to operate this, these trigeminal neuronomas in the most fascinating fashion, in the most beautiful fashion, preserving the trigeminal nerve fibers. And if you remember, the trigeminal nerve was in the superior part of the tumor, which I am avoiding in the rest of the operation. And the other thing that you must notice that I have not seen the sixth nerve, I have not seen the third nerve because they have their own little domain and own little life outside the life of trigeminal neuroma. So that is my surgery. This is another beautiful dumbbell shaped tumor. Now you know how I remove this tumor by working, working within the dura, working learning to demolish the tumor, break into the tumor, and this is the post-operative scan. This is another tumor you see, these are soft and necrotic tumor, soft and necrotic. There is a well-defined dural membrane around the tumor, and this is the post-operative scan. This is another patient which I have done several years ago, maybe more than 20, 25 years ago, and this is the post-operative image. Now, this is a large tumor, dumbbell-shaped tumor, and this tumor was resected by a posterior cranial fossa approach, and this has been removed. Normally, if the tumor is very huge and very small in the middle fossa, maybe posterior fossa approach is a viable option. But if the middle fossa part is big, like in this case, middle fossa approach is the most beautiful operation. So you see this huge tumor and this is the post-operative image. And I'm showing you several tumors that you see. 
and then you, when you go out, when you finish this lecture, everything will look like a trigeminal neuronoma to you, I'm sure. So this erosion of the Petrus apex you see, and this is the post-operative scan. This is another tumor having smallish tumor, and this is the post-operative scan. And this is also done recently during the COVID times. So this is another huge, quite a large trigeminal neuronoma. This is the post-operative scan. And let me show you the video of this patient. So this is the tumor. And you just, you know, basically don't go for intricacies of this case. You just go for my style. So in exactly five or 10 minutes, I will do this craniotomy and then I'm removing, I'm elevating the dura. You see, elevating the middle fossa dura from the dura of the trigeminal nerve. You see, this is the dura of the trigeminal nerve, this one. Now I'm cutting the dura of the trigeminal nerve sharply. You see this tumor has a cystic component. I have made a very small incision and then I will break into the tumor. You see here, I'm breaking into the tumor and then I will expand my exposure through that smallish thing. You see there is fluid in the tumor. I am not exposing the carotid artery. There is no proximal control. There is no distal control. My control is just the dura and working within the dural confines. So that is the trick. Now you can see that there is, unfortunately this tape is edited tape and this is the post-operative scan. This is the pre-operative image of the same patient. You see this is a huge tumor and there is some residue here. This must be some immediate post-operative. I don't think I will leave any residue in trigeminal neurinoma, sometimes maybe here and there, but you must remember that do not attempt to remove the dura of the posterior cranial fossa. I will show you, this is middle fossa tumor and this is post-operative scan. This is a little bit larger dumbbell and this is the post-operative scan of this patient. This is small tumor and this is done several years ago, working within the dura, working with it. This is a tumor which I had done by without doing any craniotomy, by working in the infratemporal fossa. This is another huge tumor which was removed. You can imagine this tumor, no exposure, just doing this mini craniotomy, come extra dural, open the dura, soft tumor, break into the tumor, demolish the tumor. And most important message is, you have to save the fibers of the fifth now. If you have not saved, you have done harm to the patient. If you cannot save, I'm not saying you, I have saved in 100% of cases and all my patients will improve. I'm not trying to say that. There is no, nobody in the world can say that. But our all our attempt should be to save the fibers of the trigeminal nerve. Because if you damage the trigeminal nerve, you have, you have the eye is finished. So this is pre-operative and post-operative image. This is another pre-operative and post-operative image. Now you see there is a nubbin here. This nubbin, this nubbin does not mean that it is going inside the carotid artery or it is going inside the cavernous sinus. No, this is also dura. So come from here, open the dura, work within the dura and you can remove this tumor very beautifully and very fantastically. And huge dumbbell shaped tumor, but you see the beauty, there is soft and necrotic tumor, and you have to remove the entire tumor. You don't have to remove the dural wall. So when the tumor is multi-compartmental, the posterior fossa component is always with dura. So this is another tumor pre-operative and post-operative. 
this is another huge tumor which is now i can imagine those who are watching my operation now will say yes this is an easy tumor i am sure those who are watching this show today of mine will say that yes this is a soft tumor i will come from here i'll break into the tumor and this is a very easy neurosurgical tumor pre operative and post operative many of these tumors look very similar now i will show you this tumor you see this is the tumor having multiple fluid levels and i told you that fluid levels means that this can be a danger tumor now i just show you the video i am doing it from the middle fossa and i want to show you and you carefully look at the dural wall in the posterior cranial fossa around the tumor i am not trying to show you any my aim of this showing what i am showing you is i want to show now i am in the posterior fossa i have removed the tumor and i want to show you how see this tumor this is the dura covering the posterior fossa component of the tumor this is not tumor this is not tumor and i will show you now this is not tumor this is dura and now you will see i will cut into the dura and i will remove the tumor within the dura you see i am cutting with a scissor here see there is a fluid here fluid means the now and i am the tumor is within the dura you see you see this tumor and i am peeling the tumor of the dura so posterior fossa tumor and you don't have to remove the dura and if you remove the dura you can damage the fifth nerve fibers you must remember that so this is the pre operative and this is post operative image this is pre operative and post operative image this is a huge tumor you see necrotic i am sure those watching this show will say it is a very straight forward tumor and i want you my dear friends to know that this is indeed a straight forward tumor and i am i am telling you of course many of you have visited me and seen me this tumor can be removed in not more than 25 30 minutes if you know this tumor if you do not know this tumor you cannot remove this tumor if you sit for 5 10 hours or do this coagulation that coagulation and you will come out completely corneal opacity will develop not only the patient you will also develop if you go on working with this tumor so this is this is beautiful tumor you see beautiful this dura covering come from here open the dura if you have to go in the middle fossa you have to you see the superior petrosal sinus goes over you have to cut the superior petrosal sinus you cut the superior petrosal sinus you combine the middle fossa and the posterior fossa and then you can remove the tumor this is the posterior fossa dominant tumor and this is post op immediate post operative picture this is another huge tumor this is very straight forward neurosurgical tumor these are not these are not dangerous tumor because there is dura dura is the mother and that mother protects the tumor keeps the tumor in compact in comfortable environment now this is a cystic tumor and as i mentioned to you cystic tumor you just evacuate the cyst content without removing the wall very common to recur these tumors can recur so this is a recurrence of that tumor you see this patient was operated then i removed this tumor completely and then of course this tumor you have to see that whether this patient will need upfront radiation or not this is another cystic and necrotic tumor which was operated and there is a recurrence of this tumor which was again operated so cystic necrotic and tumors with fluid levels can have a very more prominent recurrence so you see this is the tumor which has been beautifully beautiful neurosurgery is a wonderful beautiful subject and i know that if we love our subject we can do beautiful operation most important for you is love neurosurgery enjoy neurosurgery so 
with extracranial extension, when it is going along V1, along V2, along V3, the extracranial part is also interdural. And you can do a small craniotomy here and go down. So we are doing actually reverse skull based tumor approach, reverse skull base. Normally we go down and go up. In this, we, I am describing from up, you can go down. So reverse skull base approach, interdural approach for these trigeminal neurinomas. So extracranial extension, you must know that dural cover is present. You can do a cranial approach, and I like to call this a reverse skull base approach. You see this tumor is going in the, in the orbit, and this tumor has been removed and the dura has been preserved. This is pre-op and post-op. This is immediate, just done very few days ago, and this is some blood here, this is not tumor. And this is a beautiful resection. The dura around it has to be preserved. This is another tumor, thin tumor. And this has been removed from the transcranial reverse skull base approach, this tumor. This tumor, which is going down in the posterior, in the infratemporal fossa. Do a small craniotomy, remove the middle fossa part and then do a smallish middle fossa resection and go down from up, from, from up, reverse skull base, and you can do a beautiful tumor resection. So this is the tumor. You see the carotid artery is displaced by the tumor, and this is the post-operative. I must say that these tumors should be removed in quick time, not hours, not more than one hour. This is another huge tumor you see. This tumor has been resected recently in during COVID time. This is post-operative blood here. And this will disappear. I will show you in the next, after a few weeks or months, this whole tumor is, this is a recurrent tumor, recurrent trigeminal, and this has been removed beautifully. This multi-compartmental, you see there is one compartment here, one compartment here, one compartment here. These multi-compartmental tumors are more aggressive forms of tumor and the recurrence rate is much higher in these kind of tumors. So let me show you the dural cover for the, just I have this image is to just to show you how the extracranial part is covered by the dura. You see this is extra, this is the middle fossa part. And I want to show you the extracranial component of the tumor, how it is covered by the dura. When you are doing extra dural approach to cavernous sinus, first thing that you have to do is identify the middle meningeal artery along the foramen spinosum and cut it. You see now I'm going extracranial, middle fossa floor I'm removing. And you see the dura here, beautiful dura, which is going along. The dura is completely covering the middle fossa. This is a softish tumor. You see I'm having the whole tumor in front of me extradurally. And the tumor is having its own dural compartment. Then I'm widening the middle fossa floor a little bit more by drilling. Sometimes you can just do rongers and you can cut them, cut this bone or you can drill. You see how the whole tumor intra in the cavernous sinus and extracranial is covered by dura. And a huge tumor can be removed in quick time if you have this concept that no artery will be inside, no nerve will be inside. You see, I'm using a knife to cut. You see, can you imagine knife being cut? Used to be, and this is a soft tumor. And then of course you can use your beautiful dissection, aggressive dissection, no coagulation, and you can remove this tumor. Now you see this tumor. This tumor, there is a 
big bump over the parotid gland. And this is going in the posterior fossa, in the middle fossa, and in the parotid near, in the subcutaneous area. I'm not sure, yes, so I am having a video here. Let me see what video I can show you. So this is a small little craniotomy I am doing. This is, has been edited by my young associate consultant neurosurgeon. Then I am removing the middle fossa flow. You must remember that this tumor is quite big. So little bit I'm, so what I have done is I have connected the middle fossa with the infratemporal fossa. Then I will remove this tumor. You see, learn the art of dissecting this tumor. Remember the fact that this tumor is going to have its dura. Even the skin part, you see, I have broken into the tumor because of the bulk. Then I am demolishing the tumor using my suction, not by bipolar in my hand. There is no bipolar. Several operations of mine will not have bipolar coming in the picture at all for a long time. Of course, when it is required, you have to do, you're not a, you're a surgeon, you're not a, you know, egoistic fool. When it is required, you have to remove it, you use it. But what I'm trying to say, you can do this tumor with a, even in a bloody field, not with heavy coagulation. So what is going on is I'm removing the bulk. You, you, you remember this tumor was a very huge tumor, which is going in various compartments. And you must remember that this tumor will have the relationship with carotid artery and relationship with facial nerve in the parotid region and various other nerves. So what I'm doing is I'm removing this tumor and you see here from underneath, that I am removing the tumor. You see here, I have removed the tumor. This is the zygomatic, under the zygomatic arch of the parotid, in the region of parotid, I have removed the tumor. And there is a dural cover. You see this cover I am removing? So these three components of the tumor can be removed from one small little exposure. huge tumor, mega tumor, middle fossa tumor, posterior fossa tumor, infratemporal fossa tumor, subcutaneous tumor can be removed quickly. Can be, you see how the tumor is coming out beautifully. And also I have to tell you that you have to save the fibers of the fifth nerve. If you do not save, you have not, you see you have damaged the person. And my feeling is you can save the those fibers only if you do not work aggressively with coagulation. Now I'm going in the middle fossa and posterior fossa. You see here, Basically, now I'm going in the posterior fossa, the dura is covering the tumor, and I have actually removed the whole tumor. And then my hemostasis. My hemostasis is, of course, coagulation where it is required, and of course, no coagulation when it is not required. And many of these operations can be done with very, very little coagulation. This is another huge tumor. Now you will say, what approach I will, in? don't come from the nose and you, of course it is behind the maxilla and you can come from the nose. But if you just do a smallish craniotomy here, you can come interdural and you can remove this tumor 
in quick time. Of course, you can remove this tumor by endoscope is possible. I'm not saying it is not possible, but I'm showing what I have done and what I like. Small little craniotomy here, open the dura, work within the dura and remove this tumor. This is another huge tumor which can be removed similarly. And you see this patient has already lost his corneal sensation. This tumor is going in the infratemporal fossa here. And this is the post-operative image. And I must say that in neurosurgery, there are easy tumors. There is nothing easy, of course, but this is one of the more beautiful tumors to be removed. This, of course, I have shown you earlier. Now, even when the tumor recurs, when there is a recurrence of massive tumors, they occur in an apoplectic form and sudden onset symptoms. And when they occur in an apoplectic form, they also within the dura. You see, this is a recurrence of the tumor and this can be done very beautifully in quick time. This is the tumor. Uh, this, this is that apoplectic form of tumor. Now what I'm going to show you is another beauty. See, this is the arch of Atlas and this is C2 and this is C2 ganglion. I, re I just now showed you removal of a dangerous brain tumor without craniotomy. And now I want to show you removal of a spinal tumor without laminectomy or without bone work. This is C2 ganglion. And in I wrote an article where I said that C2 neurinoma arises from the C2 ganglion. I told you that Trigeminal neurinoma arises from gastrin ganglion, but C2 neurinoma arises from C2 ganglion. So C2 ganglion is behind the C1, C2 joint. And these tumors are outside the spine. So I wrote a series of 60 cases of C2 ganglion tumor. And so this is C2 ganglion like trigeminal neurinomas. C2 neurinomas are associated with vertebral artery and venous complex, quite a venous complex like cavernous sinus here, venous complex here. So we said that trigeminal neurinomas are like this, C2 neurinoma also like this. This part A, B and C, we said that this part is intradural. But then I wrote another article where I showed a series of 50 cases where I said the intradural part is also within the dura. So this was like trigeminal neurinoma. So this is C2 neurinoma and this is trigeminal neurinoma. So this is completely within the dura. This is completely within the dura. This is trigeminal neurinoma, exactly similar. This is the whole thing is within the dura. This whole thing is within the dura. Bilateral trigeminal neurinoma, bilateral C2 neurinomas are also quite common. So I want to show you the surgery of C2 neurinoma. And this is tape. This is the spinous process of C2. This is the arch of Atlas. And this is the large tumor here. And you must see this surgery without doing any laminectomy and without doing, and this tumor I had operated completely and the whole operation from skin to skin was 15 where, minutes where from tumor? skin to skin. This the, so this is the tumor. And now you see here, I am going to now cut the dura. The you see, I am cutting the dura. This, this is, is C2 tumor. Here, okay? tumor. You see the tumor? And there is this small vessel which is jumping on it. But you see, this is, this the is, this is C2, and this is, this is the and you tumor. must remember and that there is vertebral artery in close proximity. I'm going to show you how now I am opening the dura. You see, I have opened the dura here. This is the dura. I'm this is the dura. dura. Can you see that? I cut the dura. You see this? Yeah, I think that audio is coming from yeah, your, your video. I'll show you this removal of this tumor. You if you this? respect the dura, 
you can remove this tumor in very quick and beautiful time. And the vertebral artery is outside the dura. And you must know that C2 nerve can be sectioned. There's no need to preserve the C2. If, if you have to section, you can section the C2 nerve roots. Not like trigeminal. You see how I'm removing the tumor without any laminectomy and without any kind of, you see how I'm removing the intradural part of the tumor by just doing a dissection. This is completely an unedited tape. You must remember that. You see, there are some nerve roots, nerve roots here. This is the, you know, I want to Sorry, the there is the some noise system. coming here no, because this was a live surgical demonstration. I was operating from India and it was being shown in London. And there is some noise that you are seeing here, hearing maybe. Yeah, I think it's coming from your video. Uh, yes, yes, no problem, no problem. No problem, okay. John, don't okay. worry. Okay. If you move it, you might. It'll be okay if you move your yeah, yeah. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. So you see this operation was done live. When I was operating from India, it was live in London in eight minutes. The whole tumor was removed. And that is the closure, okay? Now I'm showing you, now I'm showing you another tumor, maybe this. So this is another tumor, C2 neuronoma. Just enjoy only two minutes. I will take to remove this two or three minutes maybe. And you see this tumor here, quite a large tumor. What I'm trying to sh show you is that respect the dura and you can remove this difficult looking tumor in quick time. So I am first opening that area without laminectomy, without any bone work. And then I'm holding the tumor. You can imagine no opening of the lamina, like trigeminal neuronoma. No opening of the lamina, no unnecessary work. And also you must know that this is not an edited tape. This is completely live. I'm holding the tumor and I am and you see how this tumor respects the membranes. So this was quite a huge tumor if you if you have seen. And this is the C2 spinous process. And this is the arch of Atlas. No coagulation will come into picture. See, if some people might real think that it is a bloody operation, they say, no bloody. This is a very fantastic operation. No blood. You see how I'm removing the tumor. C2 neuronomas are considered to be, you know, people come by extreme lateral approach and then come remove the vertebral artery. I am saying, no vertebral artery should be even seen because this is the vertebral artery is outside the tumor and outside the dura. If you respect the dura, this tumor does not need vertebral artery exposure. 
Some tumors need vertebral artery exposure, but not C2 neuronomas. See, this tumor is going in the canal here. And those who are afraid of seeing this red color, I am not sure how I can justify my red color. You have to enjoy the red color in neurosurgical life. You see the whole tumor has been removed and you have seen that this tumor, there has been just now, and that is the end of the story. So this is C2 neurinoma. You see, this is completely dura and this is completely dura. That you must, now I will rapidly show you another third nerve tumor. What I'm saying is third nerve tumor is surrounded by the dura. It arises from the oculomotor cistern and this is completely dura. You preserve the dura and you can save the third nerve function. You see post-operative third nerve function is don't remove the capsule. This tumor arises from the oculomotor cistern. This is the third nerve cave and this tumor, this third nerve cave, like Meckel's cave, like geniculate ganglion cave, like C2 ganglion cave, the tumor arises from inside this cave and there is a dural cover and you preserve the dura an interdural approach for oculomotor tumors. So there is a dural covering. Don't remove this dura. Learn the art of demolishing, breaking the tumor without coagulation, and you can save the third nerve. You see there is dural cover around the tumor. Sixth nerve tumor is a different entity, and this sixth nerve is a different tumor. Similarly, this is the tumor seven. I have talked in on UR symposium earlier on these tumors. This is seven nerve tumor arises from the geniculate ganglion. The whole tumor is within the dura. And I am not sure if the people watching me will believe or not. This tumor can be removed in 20 minutes. This is a soft tumor, come basal subtemporal, open the dura, retain the dura, don't work near the course of the seven nerve and you can attempt to preserve the seven nerve. Of course, seven nerve preservation is not possible. This is a facial nerve tumor recurrence and also within the dura and I removed this tumor in very quick time. Similarly, interdural approach for lower cranial nerve tumor is a big beautiful possibility. We'll make an incision, work within the dura, and you can improve the sensation of the fifth of the lower cranial nerve. You see, this is don't remove the capsule. This is not the dura, this is dura, this is not the capsule. Preserve the dura, work within the dura, and there is a quite a high possibility of improving the lower cranial nerve function. So there are you have to know the impact of arterial displacement in diagnosing the trigeminal neurinoma. Trigeminal neurinoma will never encase the carotid artery like this. So one mistake I had made, this was a tubercoloma. I made a mistake I, of identifying it as a trigeminal neurinoma. I made another mistake. I identified this as a trigeminal neurinoma, but this was an aspergilloma. This kind of a hugely vascular tumor, I will never make a mistake. This is not a trigeminal neurinoma. Trigeminal neurinomas are never so vascular. Trigeminal neurinomas are never so vascular tumors. So this is a meningioma, hemangiopericytoma in the cavernous sinus. I removed it and I had thought that it is not a trigeminal neurinoma. Chordomas will displace the carotid artery anteriorly. And these will, the, the dura will be preserved here. Carotid displays in front, dura pre displays backwards, and these tumors should be removed from interdural approach. You see the carotid artery displaced anteriorly. This is not a trigeminal neurinoma. In 1995, I described this beautiful operation approach middle fossa subgastrian ganglion interdural approach. This is not a trigeminal neurinoma.
carotid artery is displaced anteriorly. This is not petrous apex erosion. This is petrous apex destruction by chordoma. Carotid artery is displaced anteriorly, dura is displaced posteriorly, and this is postoperative image. So you see this tumor, this is, a, this is not trigeminal neurinoma. There is destruction of the bone here, but not of the dura. And I will just quickly show you some of a chordoma, how you can remove this tumor in a preserving the dura. Working within, you see, this is the carotid artery inside the tumor. And what you have to do is save the sixth nerve. So chordoma, the approach is different. You are working with the carotid artery. Trigeminal neuronoma, you don't operate like this. Trigeminal neuronoma is a different surgical approach. Similarly, this is cavernous hemangioma encasing the carotid artery. This is not a trigeminal neurinoma. Don't make a mistake because it is a heavily vascular tumor. You see, this tumor is not a trigeminal neurinoma. I operated this by transgastrin ganglion approach. You see, this is the gastrin ganglion. I, this is not a trigeminal neurinoma. I'm opening this heavily vascular tumor, opening the gastrin ganglion to approach medial gastrin ganglion tumor. And this is cavernous hemangioma of cavernous sinus. I have shown earlier on UHA symposium this operation, but those who have not seen, please enjoy this. Opening the gastrin ganglion and working medial to the gastrin ganglion. This is a heavily vascular tumor. This is a cavernous hemangioma of cavernous sinus. And you will see that you will see the carotid artery just medial to the tumor, that is carotid artery. Now, if you say that I don't want to see the red color, I want to see hemostasis all the time, then please do not operate on these tumors. These are the tumors where you have to demolish the tumor. Remove the tumor and you will find that these tumors uh, supply comes out from the infrolateral trunk of the cavernous sinus carotid artery. And maybe I will show you that trunk. Now I am trying to find out the supply of this tumor. You see here, there is the vessel coming. You see that vessel? This is the vessel of the tumor, which, is, which has to be coagulated. Once you coagulate this vessel, the whole hemostasis becomes instant and complete. And then you, do, you see this beautiful tumor I am removing from within the cavernous sinus. I'm just showing you this tumor because if you come and don't identify this tumor before operation, you might land up with very heavy blood flow and very heavy bleeding and then you regret. But this tumor can be diagnosed with different radiological parameters, encasement of the carotid artery which doesn't happen in trigeminal neurinomas. So this is, of course, not the subject of my today's discussion. You see the whole tumor has been removed in a very fantastic fashion. So this is, Now, before I close, I just want to show you the closure. This is the layers of the temporalis muscle, deep layer, superficial layer of the temporalis fascia. This is a big middle fossa floor defect. And this is a temporalis muscle with temporal squamal bones. So I wrote rotate this bone, not for trigeminal neurinoma, of course, but this is an osteomyoplastic flap. You rotate this osteomyoplastic flap. I described this flap in 1994. You rotate this flap and you can take the bone from convexity here and put it in the region of the defect. So this is an osteomyoplastic flap. 
you can split the cranium and bring the flap like this. So I called it long flap. This, there was an osteoma here. I took the flap and placed it here. So long vascular pedicle flap. So you can rotate the temporalis muscle, both superficial and deep fascia like this, and rotate this as a flap. And I use this flap as a very common flap for when I do glomus jugularis tumor surgery or extensive surgery for chordomas, extended vascularized temporal muscle fascia flap. You see, I'm cutting here, rotating, keeping this attachment, and I take it like a very long flap. So there is a huge muscle bone defect in the middle fossa here like this. And there is CSF coming. And this picture is from 1994. And I use this muscle fascia flap or muscle bone flap. I rotate this to cover the defect. And then I rotate this osteomyoplastic flap. You see this bone flap and I use, I describe this multi-layer reconstruction of the middle cranial fossa flow. I describe another beautiful layer, the subgalial fascial in 1994 or 95 for the first time in neurosurgical literature, subgalial fascia. So you can have a long flap like this, include the subgalial fascia the pericranial fascia and temporalis fascia, and you can use this flap. You can also use the outer layer of dura as a pedicle flap. So thank you, my dear friends. I hope I have been able to give you some beautiful, beautiful neurosurgical information. As you know, I love neurosurgery and I enjoy neurosurgery. And I'm sure that those who are watching are also lovers of our great subject of neurosurgery. Thank you very much. Over to you, Yuha. Thank you, Atul. Excellent lecture. This is huge experience. Maybe not to be repeated when you increase the number of cases in your big country and flow of the patients. So uh, it is very few, nearly no, neurosurgeons in the world who can get that kind of flow of cases. So like in, in a small country where I have been working in Finland with five, five and a half million people. So we, I saw that kind of case, not that those huge cases, but the regular the tri trigeminal neurinomas we saw we one or two a year. And usually I saved them for our life course in June, they, they were operated by Winko Dolenz or Adul uh, Ali Christ. Ali Christ. So uh, my experience is uh, very, very few cases. So this is a huge experience. And all, the, all what you say is certainly based on huge experience. And uh, I'm sure this tumor should be operated the way you proposed that they show, have shown in the beautiful videos also. And uh, this is based in very sound anatomical thinking how these tumors are growing and uh, you are, have to obey the tumors and the way they are growing and then take the, this beautiful tumor. So uh, I'm very grateful for this uh, lecture and also for the philosophy of the research. And so I, open the discussion for the others. I will be happy you are if people can comment on the chat box if they have liked or not liked or if they want to ask any questions on the chat box and say whatever they have to say. Hello, Dr. They are thanking you very deeply. So if there are Victor, some questions, Victor, please go ahead. Victor, yes, Victor. Hello, Dr. Atul. Thank, Thank you for showing us this uh, impressive, unusual, and amazing cases, surgical and anatomical uh, cases. They are uh, very, very interesting for all the neurosurgical community. So 
Uh, one of the main uh, problems uh, doing this kind of uh, giant uh, neurinomas is the uh, paresy of uh, the facial nerve. So which is your statistic about this? And how do you treat this uh, dangerous complication? Uh, Victor, I know you mean facial sensations, trigeminal sensation, not facial nerve. Fa uh, tri uh, trigeminal sensation, facial, yes. trigeminal facial. Yeah. You see this trigeminal patient present with numbness. Patient, the main symptom is numbness. The trigeminal sensation is already lost in majority of cases. The corneal sensation is already lost. But I have, you know, as I mentioned, you can improve these sensations. You can improve the corneal sensation. You can improve the trigeminal facial numbness. So our aim is not just you see, if you can improve, you give new eye. If you damage the cornea, the V1 division, you, the nerve will be completely wiped off. I have in my article, which I presented in the year 2002, the trigeminal sensations were improved in about 40% of cases. But now, of course, 2003 is 19 years, 18 years ago. And now my experience is much bigger and my facial sensation preservation rate is quite higher. I will say my facial preservation sensation preservation rate must be above 70 or 80% at this point of time, not preservation, improvement rate. So that is the Victor. And I can see a very beautiful musical instrument behind you, Victor. And uh, I will ask you uh, that when we close, I will request Victor to play some beautiful music at the end of the questions. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> if we're open, if we're, if Victor's open for that, we'll do it. Yes. <laughs> um, other questions? Omar? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Omar. Go ahead. Very good, Victor. Victor. One note, as question only note. You are like door. You can open the door as a possibility. I cannot hear properly. I, I, yes, okay. having a hard maybe, time, Omar. Dura. Maybe Dura. maybe he can write Dura. in the chat box. Yeah, could you text the question or the remark, Dura, uh, Omar? Please, please text it. We're having a hard time hearing you. Okay. Uh, we're not only, not only, uh, okay. Okay, Omar, text it, please. Yeah. Okay, uh, Atul, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Kaval asks, can the C2 nerve be damaged during surgery? Yes, yes. C2 nerve is a, is the very, you know, is a very benign nerve. And if you damage the C2 nerve, nothing much happens except some numbness in the back of head. And I do, as you know, craniovertebral junction fixation, C1, C2 fixation on a regular basis. And my experience with C1, C2 fixation is beyond 3000 cases now. So this, I, I cut the C2 ganglion on several occasions and C2 ganglion cutting is not such a, you know, is not such a damaging thing. Of course, you have to preserve it when you can. But if you cannot, it is not such a damaging now. Okay. Any more comments, questions? I oh. can see some nice comments by Dr. Okay. Sashwa, and he has written, John, you would like to read it by last comment by Dr. Sashwa. Can you read it? Beautiful uh, comment. Uh, let's see. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Your presentation always pierces the veil of ignorance of understanding in neurosurgical subject. Uh, it was uh, it was a great show for us, Professor. Thank you very much. Uh, and we have numerous comments there. 
uh, very similar. Um, Yuha, uh, what would you like to do? With... I think uh, we close the session. It is uh, two hours. Okay. The uh, king of webinars has uh, made wonderful presentation and we have to be guest that. And if Victor wants to play for us, so that's great. <laughs> next next Friday is Ugur Ture. I, I was uh, Ugur Ture speaking next Friday. So I, I made a mistake in the beginning of this webinar. So next Friday is Ugur Ture speaking about brainstem, brainstem uh, tumor. Okay. Tumors. Okay. Very, yeah. very good. We will advertise. Uh, Okay. In a few days. Yeah, yeah. We'll, let, we'll let everyone know about it. And thanks everyone for coming. And thanks you, Ben, uh, for translating. Ben, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Ben, are you there? Yes, you, yes. You say, can you say hi? Hi. Hi, Professor Atugo. <laughs> hi, Ben. How are you? Hi, fine. Thank you. How are, but you know, uh, I'm in a hotel, so the uh, Wi Fi was not so good. Oh, okay. So I have to close my. Uh, Oh, okay. Oh. So save the save the bandwidth. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Ben. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you again. Now uh, you know. Uh, today uh, we have around two thousand audience. Oh, great! Great. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. super. Great. That's mm -hmm. super. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And Takashi. And Takashi also. Ah, yeah. Good evening, everyone. So uh, it's a very uh, interesting and very informative. We have few experiments to try germinal neuronoma, but uh, we have several patients. So it's very informative. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. So okay. uh, thank you, Dr. Okay, Goer, thank and thank you, you her, for wonderful uh, lectures every Friday. And th thank you for translating into Japanese uh, in real time. And we'll yeah, see you. Thank you. We'll see you. Sir, yeah. Okay, it's we'll a good see, opportunity. Yes. We'll see everyone next week and stick around to network. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. Thank you.